Hello, Reformers, and welcome to a special feature of The Parabellum. Now, I would have loved to have brought you a video of this when it was in early access, or when it was in closed beta, or whatever they want to call it, but unfortunately, there were a number of conditions that the mod creator wanted me to fulfill, and unfortunately, I was not willing to do that. So, yeah, here we are with the public release and we can now finally take a look at the mod. So, this is set apparently in World War I times, and there are a number of very unique features with tanks and airplanes and things, so I am very interested to see what's going on with that. So, let us start a new game. We're going to take a quick look at the character creation, of course, because that's what we usually do in this, and... Okay, wow, the background is very difficult to read. Anyway, welcome to the Parabellum mod. This is a Red Wars sub-mod, and yes, it's the Great War of Calradia, same as World War One. And so, most of the two-handed rifles and shotguns have a melee mode. Yes, thank you. Well, that's, that's good. And don't fight at night. You won't see anything. Yep, that's good. Okay, good to know. If you have troops in your party... In night maps, you are cons uh, okay. Yeah, in night maps, yes. If you have troops in your party, you will assume control of them after the player death. Well, that's actually rather nice. Okay, so let's just continue onward here. And I think, considering, I think we're probably going to be a corrupt politician. That seems pretty prevalent. So maybe we'll do something like that. And now, what else? A secretary to a pilot? No, no, we're not going to do that. You spent your early life as mm, engin engineer's apprentice, maybe engineer's apprentice. Why not? It might be actually pretty good if if engineering is used for more than just building siege equipment nowadays. Maybe it will be used for repairing tanks or something. Who knows? Anyway, we're gonna go for a political assistant, and then we're gonna go for lust for money and power because, well, you know, our father was a corrupt politician after all. So here we go. Decided to buy a weapon with one magazine in it. Quickly, having found a clandestine shop, you buy a shotgun, a pistol, a revolver, or a rifle. I actually don't know what our proficiencies are in, but I suppose firearms are all under the same one. So, I don't even know what to go for. I, I, I suppose a pistol, because a revolver is going to be relatively low in magazine, and the shotgun is... Oh, maybe the shotgun would be kind of cool, but obviously it does have limited range. Hmm, I think a pistol will be fine. Let's go with that. Okay, so... Ah, we have some rather interesting banners here. So, hmm, let's have a look. Are we going to be selecting anything here? Oh, well, okay. Well, we're getting we're getting more colorful here. So, I think what are we going to do? Ah, okay. So, uh, okay. So they have I think three pages of unique banners that are more to do with around this time period. And then of course they have the ah, they have four, four pages actually. So, I think we're going to pick something relatively neutral here. And I think we're going to go with the caveman here, because the caveman seems to be representative of, you know, current day politics. So, let's go with that. Why not? Allow me to quit without saving. And we have now gained a Mauser C C C96 pistol. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we're going to call ourselves Reformist. No, 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 we're not going to go. <laughs> Are we going to go with that? No, we're not going to go with that. But now we have the opportunity to spend some points. So I'm actually going to see what we're going to do here. So we have, we don't have mounted shooting or anything like that. Do, wh where is shooting? Is there, is there shooting here at all? There's just mounted shooting. Oh, okay. So I think weapon master would be relatively good to go for. So I think we're going to go for some in that, some more in intelligence as well as agility. Go for that. There we go. Now the thing is. With guns, with firearms, you're probably going to die almost instantly, so I'm probably going to be unable to really spend any points in Iron Flesh. It's kind of, you know, going to be kind of pointless, I would say. But maybe not, who knows? Let's just see how much damage we actually begin to take initially, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I'm going to spend another point in Engineering just in case. And then we'll spend some points in Pistols, because obviously we do have a pistol now, so that's going to be nice. So let's go over to our character creation. And let's randomize things up a little bit. Ah, come on now. Give me something good. Ah, uh, uh, okay, yes. Uh, oh, okay, that's uh, that's reasonable. I think we will go, we'll go with that. I think that's relatively nice. Okay, so let's make him a little bit older. There we go. Okay, so let's start our adventure. Okay, so we're not getting the initial starting quest, which is actually quite, quite nice, because usually we do get those kinds of things, but obviously I did not get to choose where I spawned, which is obviously a little bit of a shame. But now we get our first look at the 
world map. So if we take a look around here, we can see that we have Praven, Suno, Axkarl, and Dirim under the control of the Swadian Empire. And then, of course, we have the Kingdom of Rodox over here with their standard towns. And we have the Saranid Empire over there. The Kyrgyz Khanate as well. And the Vegia Soviet Socialist Republic. And they've added, like, an, a bunch of nice trees around there as well, which I very much appreciate. It seemed rather sparse, I have to say in the native game so it's always nice to see a little bit more added there now where are we we are spawning around here aren't we we're, we're, yes we're around the training field so where do we want to go do we want to get swadian units or do we want to get something else i think I, I suppose we'll just go for nords i guess because they're, they're always good you know infantry and everything uh yeah i, I have a bad feeling well <laughs> that i'm going to be greeted by huge amounts of new kinds of units. I don't think we're going to be seeing the standard kind of unit. Nope, certainly not. Certainly not the standard kind of unit. So maybe the various faction traits are not going to hold true in this particular mod. So as you can see here, we have a Nord volunteer. It has some pretty reasonable stats for a recruit and, and we have no money whatsoever. So what we're going to try and do is find some bandits if we can. But I would like to go to Sargoth really fast first, just to take a look. Oh, okay, apparently a faction was eliminated almost immediately. Not entirely sure what that was about, but hopefully it's nothing that's going to affect us. So let's take a look at our goods here. We have some machine tools, machinery, and things like that. We also have some grapes. Obviously, I don't have any money to be able to spend. We do have some canned fish, though. And here we go. So these are the various weapons that we will be able to use throughout the mod and as you can see the huge amounts of rifles here the speed rating is actually decent in comparison to muskets for example because yeah i've used a lot of muskets in the past and they are extremely extremely slow to reload but this is actually really nice there's also a gas grenade here which is i assume going to be pretty useful and now i'm actually thinking to myself do i have ammo with this pistol do i have ammo because it doesn't seem like i have ammo so, am I going to need to buy ammo? It seems like I might have to, but this will then mean, as a result of me not having any ammo right here and not having any money, that I won't be able to actually shoot anything in the first fight? I hope my volunteers will be able to just deal the damage that they need to deal. So, let's just... I think we'll go into Swedian territory, actually, because that seems to be usually the place where you can find the weakest bandits, if there are bandits still available. Maybe I'll just have to go to a training field instead, but then again, I will not be able to make any money. So maybe that is going to be a bit difficult to deal with, but hopefully we'll be okay. So let's make our way around and see if we can find some bandits. Alright, so it seems like we found some looters, and there's only six of them, which is actually kind of nice, because that gives us a little bit of an opportunity to see what's going on. And yes, I don't have any bullets. Nope. I don't have any bullets, but at least we do get to see some of the models. And uh, yeah, I gotta say that the pistol looks very, very cool. I would very much like to have bullets for it though, so hopefully we're gonna be able to buy some soon. So, what do our guys actually use here? They seem to be using a rifle of some sort, but yeah, hopefully they're going to be able to use it proficiently enough to be able to eliminate these looters from a very far distance. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Now that is. Oh yeah, now that is doing some work right here, and I, I don't even know how many bullets they have. Wish I would be able to... Sh can, I sh can I shoot? I can shoot, but I think... Oh, oh I, I can shoot. Okay, so does that mean that I am actually... Do I have unlimited ammo with this? I don't think so somehow. Surely not. Surely not, but we have attained victory. I'm actually just going to see. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I have about 12 shots with this pistol, which is perfectly adequate, but obviously I don't have any others to be able to use to reload. But that's okay, because now we have a bunch of things that I can buy here. Yeah, the armor is obviously not going to be very good, and that's in turn going to mean that it's going to be very, very easy to die. And obviously, because it, this is primarily a firearms mod, it's going to mean that you're basically playing fire and sword, kind of. So the, you know, time to kill is very, very short. Which is absolutely fine. So, we're going to go over here. Ooh, we could visit the industrialists and bankers. That might be a nice idea, but obviously I don't have any money just yet. So, let's just sell all of these things. Oh, there was actually some pistol ammo there. 
Maybe that would be good. Caliber pistol out. Yeah, why not? Let's use that. And then I can sell everything else. There we go. So 570 dinars. Very nice. And I think I can probably try and get some bread. And the fruit is... Wow, well, the fruit only stacks in 10 now. So that's a little bit difficult for me. Okay, so canned fish. Let's go with that. And yeah, I think that's fine. So let's go and see what that actually means on the industrialist. Ah, okay, so buying land and things like that. That's actually really nice. So hopefully we'll be able to do that sooner rather than later. And this is our first look at the tavern. Very nice. We have a Balionic mercenary there. And yes, obviously the tavern keeper as well. We look very, very stylish, don't we? Yes, very stylish indeed. So is there anything else I can do here? Not much so far, but... What about the local heavy weapons factory? Oh yeah, you can get tanks. Yeah, did I mention that? Yeah, you can get tanks, you can get airplanes, you can get howitzers and things like that. So, I have I have actually no idea how this is actually going to work, but as you can see here, here you can order tanks, armored cars and planes. Note that if your party size limit was reached, you can't add more troops to it. So, yeah, for example, we could just go for a heavy tank for 8000 dinars. No idea what that's going to do. But we're going to hopefully find out a little bit later on in the episode. So what I'd like to do is probably level up a couple of our forces here. And they're just going to... Oh yeah, they're going to go into some Nord infantry. But they're going to gain experience. Or they're going to be a little bit more experienced than these infantry right here. And then otherwise, of course, we do have the sharpshooter variant. I would like to take a look at the mod options in just a second as well. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. But as you can see, they gain... About 15 weapon proficiency. They get a little bit in iron flesh and everything. And I think now is a good time to take a look at the troop trees. Alright, so as you can see, we have a pretty standard menu here with the exception of taking a look at the world map and the faction's troop tree. So let's take a look at the troop tree here. I, I, yeah, I think the first one is not, not, not yet ready or is not actually displaying there. But the Swadians, as you can see, are here. And you can see the very very well yes they have some pretty menacing looking units and then of course we have the vagias here and as you can see they they go into some snipers hunters and uh, they even have some mounted units as well i can't scroll down by the way so i'm not entirely sure how i would be able to do that otherwise the kurjit carnate obviously do have ah oh, they have dragoons obviously they're going to be very very fast on the fields of battle and then we have the nords here they have snipers and hunters as well, and hopefully we'll be able to see those in action soon. And uh, yes, then, yes, it's basically all the same in these regards, but obviously they do have different armor and different weapons and uh, things like that. And then you can also see the gear that they are they are using. So, for example, the Serenid Infantry, very experienced people. They're going to be using carabiners, and uh, yeah, the speed rating is actually pretty decent. 40 speed rating for them, so they're going to be shooting pretty fast. And then we have the Helvetian. Really? Oh, wow. Okay, so, yeah, we have an, an additional faction here. A different, Two additional factions, three additional factions. That's cool. That is very cool. I, I actually didn't see those. So where are they? They're over here. Yeah, look at that. I didn't even take a look at the entire map. Now, isn't that a travesty? That's an absolute travesty. But, yes, they have expanded the map as well, which is nice to see. So, yeah, United States of Balion there. And, wow, that's actually a really large faction. That is a very large faction. And we also have New Albion there as well. And where is the, where's the other one? Ah, down here. There we go. Yes. So, there are three new factions. I would not want to go to war against the United States of Balion because it seems like they are... They're very big, aren't they? Yes, they are very big, so... Need to be a little bit careful about that. But obviously, the Vagias are actually pretty decent themselves in terms of territory gained. But, anyway... I think it would be a good idea to take a look at some of the other options here. It doesn't seem like there's actually anything in the camp menu, so okay, there's not much to do there. But otherwise, I think what we'll probably do now is take a look at some of the higher level troops, maybe buy a tank or two, and also maybe check out some of the bombers. Alright, so here we go. We have now attempted to defend a village from a mountain bandit infestation. As you can see, we have a bunch of tanks. Yes, we do. We have some tanks. And now these tanks, they don't seem to have any way that I can actually control them, which is absolutely fine because I don't think they really need to be controlled. But as you can see, 
they are dealing so much damage and they are just shooting everyone in sight which is very nice to see and i'm actually shooting a couple as well look at look at me shooting oh, look at me shooting with a pistol isn't that amazing i like that i like that and obviously it's not a you know it's not a shoot once and then you know reload sort of thing it's actually a semi semi automatic weapon which is always nice unfortunately i'm not able to get in the tank obviously but you can see all of the guns that it has and everything from inside. It's very, very powerful. And I don't even know whether you can defeat them, really. But I was just running around the Nord territory here just trying to get a couple more units. And, I mean, as you can see, <laughs> the wages, the wages are insane. But, yeah, let's just actually, hello. Hello, tank. I'm going to talk to you right now. So, yeah, as you can see, they do actually have some HP. They do have 60 HP. So they, they can maybe be destroyed. They have a huge amount of trade skill, for some reason, but, yeah, otherwise their attributes are very, very high, of course, but they don't really spec in any particular skill because, of course, they just absolutely shoot someone and they kill them instantly, so, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I'm going to try and buy a couple more of these, and there's, there's actually some village farmers running around in tractors. Well, that's, that's a nice touch, I guess, but otherwise, I'm going to see if we can get some bombers as well next time, and we're going to see what happens there. Obviously, I would very much like to fight a very big band of units. Now, I, I've, I've noticed one thing that is actually a really nice change with this mod in particular, and that is that the village recruiting is a lot less tedious because they give you a huge amount of recruits initially. They, I mean, as soon as you go into a village, they give you almost the maximum that you can recruit, which is really nice. And I'd like to see a little bit more mods do that, actually, because when you're running around and you want to recruit some people from your favorite faction, and if you go there and then, oh no, I think I've, I've actually just entered at night, haven't I? Yes, I have. We won't be able to see anything in that, as we've been warned. But yes, anyway, that gives me a little bit more opportunity to say that when you're running around and you want, you know, your favorite faction's units, you're going to be unable to recruit more than five, maybe ten at a time, dependent on your relation with that village. And that obviously eliminates that problem by basically giving you an overabundance of volunteers, which is always a nice thing. It's always a nice thing to see that, you know, you can actually get a couple more than the norm. And I think we're actually just going to tell our infantry to hold position here. I don't even know whether that... Does that tell the tanks to hold position as well, or do they just move forward automatically? Because I, as, as you can see, I mean, do they count as infantry? I'm actually unsure about that. They might. They might count as infantry, but as you can see, all of our riflemen are absolutely amazing. They're, they're hitting from all the way across the map. I have not been killed yet, which is quite interesting. I mean, you would think that I would be killed very, very easily, but it seems like I haven't. So, that's always nice. But, yeah, let's just see. I'd, I'd like them to shoot. Can you, can you shoot, please, tanks? Because when they do shoot, there's a huge amount of smoke, huge amount of explosions and things. Are they going to shoot? Come on, they're right over there. You can see them. You can see them, tanks. Go. Uh, they just have to get out, get off the initial bump area where they spawn in. And hopefully... Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell them to charge. And we're going to see if that actually makes a difference to the tanks. Because sometimes they, they take a little bit of time to acquire their targets and things. But once they do, they're able to kill multiple units at once, of course. Because they do have their cannons and things. But... Yeah, oh look, there it is, there you go, there's one of the tank's shots, obviously they're not very accurate for the most part, you do need a, a huge amount of enemies to be able to make a, a good deal of difference here, and they only cost 8,000, they only cost 8,000, so I would say that that's actually pretty reasonable, because, I mean, obviously you're not going to spend that much money leveling them up, are you, I mean, you're just going to basically have them instantly, and that's actually really nice. So, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Otherwise, I'm going to try and get some bombers, and then I'll see you in the next battle. Ah, now here's a nice feature. A train. A train conductor of the, of Rivercheg is actually asking where, where we want to go. So, I guess we're going to go... Let's go to Ravidin. Buy a ticket for 900 dinars. Yeah, sure. Okay, so... Oh, oh, wait. Did I, did, I, did I not do that? No, I didn't do that. Okay, yeah, I'll buy the ticket. Here's the money. There we go. Okay, so, so where are we going? Is it, is it actually going to... Is it going to go? Or... There it is! There's the train! Ah, <gasps> oh, there we go! And it's going! Yeah! Okay, so that's nice. Okay. Now that is really nice. I like that. That is a nice change 
to the standard I'm gonna run and hopefully not get killed by bandits thing you know and that's that's pretty cool that is pretty cool so if you don't want to run there yourself and you want the you know protection of a a bigger force I suppose because I don't know whether you, I don't think you can be attacked on the train but the point is, is that that's actually a really nice change and I think I might try to get some additional units here ah no it doesn't seem like that's the case sister of mercy hello there oh I see this is the this is the ransom broker basically but yeah that's pretty cool all right so yes what I've done is I have purchased two bombers one is one is a Durand one is a Gotha and we're hopefully going to well experience them in the next battle Okay, so I've done a bunch of off-screen enhancements, shall we say? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, we now have bombers, tanks, and a whole contingent of, well, Hel Helvetian? Are they Helvetians? I don't know, but Helvetian machine gunner men people things yeah they're going to be doing a lot of damage i would expect and also we have sharpshooters from the nords too so let's take a look and see what we're able to do against some of the saranid caravans now this is just a caravan because i wasn't sure whether we wanted to really take on a vassal just yet but as you can see our bombers are just taking off and they're dropping bombs on them they are literally okay yeah yeah, they're literally dropping bombs on them, and that was pretty powerful, if I do say so myself. That was pretty powerful. So, as you can see, oh, yep, as you can see, let me, let me not take damage, please. Thank you. Okay, yeah, as you can see, we do have our Helvetian armored sentries. Now, they have machine guns, and those guys are going to absolutely destroy. I mean, I also have a gun like this. Yeah. I have a machine gun. So basically, as you can see, I can just rain down death and destruction on anyone that I can. As you can see, the shot difficulty is absolutely insane because, well, it's a machine gun. I can't believe I actually hit someone there, but yeah. Anyway, it can carry about 100 bullets as far as I'm aware. 100 bullets, but as you can see, the, the accuracy is absolutely terrible. But obviously, if there's a huge amount of units, I'm actually kind of surprised that this guy is still alive. He's kind of just running around there, and it's kind of hilarious. But yeah, that is pretty amazing, I gotta say. I do like the addition of the automatic weapons. I feel like that is a really nice little feature. Because, you know, as I say, using muskets for that long, not really, not really great. Not really a big fan of muskets. But as you can see, I also have a grenade. So I'm going to throw that. And it blows up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that on our own people. Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work on our own people. Well, that's a shame. Or does it? I actually don't know. Yep, it does. Yes, it does. We blew everyone up. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I damaged the ground a lot. But this gives us an opportunity to try out this, which means, obviously, that I can just change to one of our own troops and I can continue fighting, which is actually rather cool. So I like that. I like that quite a bit. So there you go. Seven run out and 29 morale was our reward there. And most of our people were killed by me. So, yeah. Don't worry about that. Otherwise, that grenade that I used beforehand, I think that was a gas grenade more than anything. I do have a bunch of grenades. Oh, and sticky grenades. All oh, right, okay. Never mind then. So, yeah. Otherwise, we do get an opportunity to take huge amounts of loot here. And, yeah, they're going to sell for a huge amount as well. I mean, this Browning automatic rifle is just insane. The damage is amazing. As you can see, piercing damage. It's piercing damage, literally. Piercing damage from range is just... Wow, very, very powerful indeed. And you're going to die very, very quickly. The time to kill in this mod is very low. So, that will be it for this special feature. And if you enjoyed, be sure to let me know by hitting that button and doing things like commenting. Yes, that's what you do, right? <laughs> anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.